Welcome to my show simply entitled Women Influencers. I am Veronica Malolos, CCIM, founder and CEO of Capstack Commercial, a commercial real estate company serving the greater Orlando area. This week, we have the third installment of the compiled questions that my guests have asked me in the past. Here are clips from the episodes of Marisa Limshako, Renee Savage, and Sarah Ware. Please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe below. I welcome your comments and please share with someone who can benefit from this podcast. As we mentioned, people don't usually don't aren't courageous enough or, or don't feel comfortable to go into a new industry where there is no community that you have. There is no, you know, certain um, certainty or security uh, when you when you choose to make these new new pivots to the different industries that you that you explored in your in your professional life. So what motivated you? What was what was behind all of that? Because I think, you know, that aligns really well to some of a lot of women I know who, you know, quit their jobs to have children mm -hmm. um, for a little bit. And then they realize they want to go back. And there's a lot of fear behind going back into either a new industry or just going back to work in general. So what was that for you? So I would think that the fact that I'm an immigrant moving from originally from country to country and then eventually ended up here in the United States, moving from state to state. What I didn't have was, like you said, community and networks. I didn't go to college here, so I don't have those connections that you have from yeah. West Point. I didn't go to high school here. I went to school literally all throughout, all throughout my life in the Philippines. And so the, the answer to your question would be you get boldness, firstly, because you want to make it, right? And it's not just making it as in making it big. You just want to survive in the beginning yeah. as an immigrant. That's the beginning of that. And the boldness and the whole underdog mentality, right? That's really what motivates me. And, and then later on in my life, I found out just by having role models like those that I've encountered in the past, and even you as my role model, I have a lot of young women and young people in general who have become role models for me. I realized that I could still break some glass ceilings. Yeah. Absolutely. I can still do that. And I'm 60. And sometimes I think to myself, okay, I have probably less time than somebody like you, for instance, who still has 20, 30 years, it's your choice to keep working, but I have limited time, but I keep reminding myself that I can still do it. I yeah. can still do it. I can still apply the same lessons that we talk about on this podcast to my life, even though I'm of mature age and I'm at a later point in my career building, I can still do it. And you can still pivot. That's the Absolutely. most important part is that, yeah. yes, the reason I think, and I just realized this very recently from the different interviews that I've done on this podcast, that reality is that the reason why I've had several changes in my career was because I moved from place to place mm. and because I was an immigrant. Mm -hmm. And this whole survival thing needed to kick in. And so whatever opportunity that my environment was able to open for me led me to this next stage of my life. And so I'm very grateful, firstly, to be in the United States of America. Secondly, to be welcomed to communities that I've never really been a part of. And to be also respected because people do recognize someone's talent or they're able to open doors because of their instincts and their their heart for giving others this way to be able to make it through so that's really in a nutshell what motivates me to keep going, even though I'm older and I'm a minority woman, just like you, but you're, you're an American first. Yeah, I became an American yeah. 
23 years ago yeah <laughs> only so it's taken some time but yes i i appreciate that question very much marissa uh what piece of advice would you give to female young professionals and is it different than you would give to a mid or late career woman and if so why so the one piece of advice that I would give to women who are starting out their career, and by the way, my daughter is just heading on to university. She's my third daughter, but she still lives with us. So she's our baby. And she just completed her AA. She's decided to go to the University of Central Florida and perhaps move on to another university later on. But for her, for instance, we've had a lot of time talking about next moves, right? And I'll tell you the one piece of advice that you actually alluded to in this interview would be to be fearless. Be fearless. Don't think about the challenges so much as the solutions, right? Think about how you're going to solve and overcome those challenges as they come before you. Be fearless in your passion be fearless with your dreams. And just like you did, you said you applied, you didn't know whether you were going to be accepted. And when you got there, you were like, oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here or how I'm going to get through, but you were fearless. And I think when you're growing a career or you're building a career, you just really need to be brave and bold. Now, in the middle of your career life, there could be instances where you would think, mm, I really just need some new adventure, right? So maybe you're 15, 10 years into your career and you decide that you want to change. My advice to you, be fearless. Mm -hmm. Same piece of advice. Be fearless because you're never too old to build a new dream. As a matter of fact, that was the quote from one of an early, one of my earlier interviews. And that's a C.S. Lewis quote. And as you grow older, and perhaps you've done a few things, you've failed, you have to fail because you're not going to succeed if you've never failed. For me, for instance, I'm 60 years old. I turned 60 in March. And by the way, I celebrated my 60th birthday in Japan. So I know how beautiful that country is just this year. And I built my company two and a half years ago. And if you were in my shoes and I was on the other side of the table and you're asking me for one piece of advice at a later year of your career, or even your life, be fearless. It's okay. It's, it's okay to do something new. So that would be my answer to your question. And I appreciate that so much. The question I wanted to ask you, because you've been around commercial for quite some time, especially earning your CCIM and looking to teach others. What are some of the things that maybe the industry can do or we as women can do to help change the face of commercial real estate? What a great question. And I really did spend quite a bit of time thinking about that. So as we both know, and hopefully most people might know or might not know, generally speaking in the workforce or the labor force, there are 50% women who are in the labor force. Now in commercial real estate, there's probably about 30% or even less than that. And most women are actually more involved in retail than they are in the other disciplines of commercial ah, real estate. Interesting. And yes. And so for instance, and, and this is a loaded question, right? Because yes. it yes. takes a village. As a matter of fact, I think that there are many industries in commercial that are actually diving into diversity, equity, and inclusion, not just to include, for instance, women and in getting them more on the founder side or the C-suite side of, of the industry. But frankly, I think there are many, many associations or organizations that have been advocates for women in commercial real yes. estate. And of course, the yes. first one that comes to mind would be CREW, which is commercial yeah. real estate women. And of course, the other big organizations like, like CCIM and SIOR, RLI, we see a lot more women that are getting involved. But if there was one idea 
that I pondered on just last night about this topic, I really, really think that if there was a bigger effort to change the mindset of men in our industry, in other words, if we were to connect more with them, that instead of of really just concentrating on getting more women involved, maybe there has to be some kind of conversation that we have to have with the men in our industry so that they can understand why we're advocating so much for more women to be involved and perhaps particularly, at least from my end, minority women. Yes. Because it's not about us but it's more about the communities we serve. Correct. And, and they look, uh, and they look, they are different. That's All the communities right. are different. Correct. And I really, really believe um, that we really need to get men in, in our corner a little bit more. And the only way that we could do that is to have more conversations with the men in our industry, the decision makers, those that are willing to open doors for people like you and me. And we've been, blessed. I've been blessed. Both of my first mentors were very, very big names in the industry with CCIM and RLI, namely Robin Webb, who was past CCIM yeah. Institute president. He was my mentor. Yeah. And Ben Crosby, who was also, is not only a CCIM, but also an ALC accredited land consultant. Oh, one of the, nice. One of the largest land brokers, at least in the Southeast region. And they were always so willing to open doors for me or help me to get through some of the challenges that I had when I was first starting my commercial real estate career. As a matter of fact, I do intend to bring them on to this women's podcast. Yes, absolutely. I, I can't wait to hear it. Yeah. And, and, you know, we also need to understand kind of what the men's mindset is. Yes. Exactly, because they may be thinking something that and we're we're attacking one way and they are thinking another way. And that way, if that's, we're on the same page, it's like, oh, OK, now we can come together and kind of unite. Right. So that would be my answer to that very challenging question, Sarah. I yep, think thank you. I, that, I appreciate yep, that. I think that when we engage a little bit more with the men in our industry, I think we can learn a lot more and perhaps have that conversation that hopefully will impact the outcome that we seek. 